Just like parts, assemblies can also have configurations. They can be created through a design table or they can be created manually. While part configurations typically focus on dimensions or features, assembly configurations tend to focus on components, mates, or assembly features. They can be used to represent different versions of a design, or they can be a powerful way to improve performance, particularly when working with large assemblies. In this lesson, we'll take a look at working with configurations using this universal joint assembly. I'll create a second version of the assembly where the single part handle is replaced with a three-piece sub-assembly. If you've never used configurations before, it might be useful for you to review the lesson on part configurations, which covers some fundamental concepts of working with configurations. Here in this assembly, I'd like to create an additional configuration where the single part handle is replaced with a three-piece sub-assembly. If I switch over to the Configuration Manager tab, you can see that only a default configuration exists for this assembly. Before I create a new assembly configuration, I'd like to quickly point out a couple of options and settings here with this default configuration. I'll right-click on the default configuration and select Properties. I'll scroll down to the Advanced Options section. The options here tell SolidWorks how to handle any new features, mates, or any new components that are added when you're working with other configurations. In this example, I'll be adding a new configuration, which will have a new subassembly added, and it will be positioned with a couple of mates. So, when I'm working with the new configuration, how should SolidWorks handle those new components and mates here in this default configuration? The Suppress New Features and Mates will suppress new features and mates in this configuration when they're being added in other configurations. Likewise, with the Suppress New Components checkbox, any components I add while working in other configurations will be suppressed in this configuration. To demonstrate the effect of these options, I'll check the Suppress New Features and Mates checkbox, but I will leave the Suppress New Components checkbox cleared, and I'll come back to this in a bit. I'll dismiss the property manager for this default configuration. To add a new configuration, I can roll my cursor over the top level assembly, right click, and select Add Configuration. In the property manager, just as with parts, the area at the top allows you to add a name, description, and comments for the configuration. For this example, I'll just type in version 2 for the name and leave the rest of the settings at their defaults. I'll click OK. And the new assembly configuration is added. Version 2 is now the active configuration, so I can go ahead and make the changes. Since I'll be replacing this single piece handle with a three piece subassembly, I'll go ahead and suppress it. When I toggle back and forth between the default and version 2 configurations, you can see the difference. I'll make version 2 the active configuration to continue. To add the three piece subassembly, I'll bring up a Windows Explorer window and drag and drop it into the assembly. To position it in the assembly, I'll add a few mates. I'll first add a concentric mate. Next, I'll select the two flat faces and add a parallel mate between them. As a side note, if for any reason the faces are parallel but not aligned, you can always use the mate alignment buttons in the property manager to toggle between the two alignment options. At this point, if I click and drag the subassembly, you can see I still need to position it vertically. To do this, I'll select the top face of the bracket and the bottom face of the crankshaft component. For this mate, I'll use a distance mate and type in one millimeter. Now that I've finished adding the necessary mates, let me show you an additional feature that SolidWorks has to offer. 
This subassembly was made using components that have their own configurations. Because I have multiple configurations at the component level, I may want to specify which component configurations to use in the version 2 assembly configuration. To do this, I will click on the crank knob, and you'll notice a drop down menu appear above the context toolbar. This toolbar only appears because this component has more than one configuration. Actually, there is a button that allows you to select which configuration this applies to within the three piece crank arm subassembly. You can select this configuration, all configurations, or you can specify which configurations to apply it to. I'll select this configuration. To change the crank knob configuration, I will click on the toolbar and I will select the notches configuration, and a green check appears to confirm the change. I'll click the green check, and the assembly component updates with the new configuration. The crank arm component also has multiple configurations that I could switch between. However, I want to show you another way to change configurations for the subassembly. If I click on the full crank assembly in the feature manager tree, another configuration drop down menu appears. This means I can switch between configurations for the entire subassembly. I'll go ahead and click on the configuration ergonomic, click the green check, and the entire subassembly updates. Both the crank arm and the crank knob have changed. This drop down menu provides a simple way to change between subassembly component configurations while working at the assembly level. Now, let me switch back to the default configuration for this assembly. Right away, you can see the default configuration displays both the single piece handle as well as the three piece subassembly I just added. But why? Well, if you remember when I pulled up the properties for the default configuration, I left the Suppress New Components option cleared. That resulted in the components I added in version 2 being unsuppressed in this default configuration. However, I did check the box to suppress new features and mates. Uh, let me dismiss the property manager here. And when I switch over to the feature manager tree, I'll expand the mates folder. Here you can see that the three mates I added in the version 2 configuration are suppressed. And as you would expect, if I click and drag the three piece assembly, the mates are in fact suppressed. The settings I mentioned here are important to consider when you create your own assembly configurations so you can control how new features, mates, and components are handled in each configuration as you're working with other configurations. To finish up this example here, I'd like the default configuration to only include the one piece handle. So I'll go ahead and suppress the three-piece subassembly. I'll switch back over to the Configuration Manager tab, and I'll rename the default configuration by slow double-clicking on it, and I'll type in version 1. When I toggle between the two configurations, they now look as you would expect. Assembly design tables allow you to create and control configurations of the assembly using an Excel spreadsheet. They control suppression of components, mates, and assembly features, the configurations of parts, and numeric values of distance and angle mates. Assembly design tables are used to create and document configurations. The options and procedure are very similar to those I covered in the separate lesson on part design tables, so if you've not done so already, it might be good to review that topic before diving right into design tables in assemblies, since I won't go into all of the options again here. In this lesson, I will be using a design table to quickly create configurations of this assembly to represent several different versions of it, all within the same assembly file. Here, I would like to add several configurations of this assembly using a design table. I will begin by creating several configurations that represent the handle at various heights. Notice there are holes in the handle which can be lined up with a hole in the lower leg for the different height position. In SolidWorks assembly, there's actually a distance mate that was used to control the height of the handle, which we will look at in a moment. If I switch over to the Configuration Manager tab, you can see that right now it just lists the default configuration. As I mentioned in the lesson on part design tables, this window can actually be split to show both the feature manager design tree along with the configuration manager. 
for the sake of clarity, I will be using a single pane and switching back and forth between tabs as necessary. To get started, I'll create a design table by going to Insert, Tables, Design Table. When the Property Manager appears, I will use the Auto Create option, and I will leave the rest of the options at their defaults. I'll mention again, if you would like further explanation of these options, review the separate lesson on Part Design Tables, or as always, you can browse the SolidWorks help file. I'll click the green check, and a pop-up appears where I can select from the following dimensions to add to the design table. To get started, I will select the one called D1 at Handle Overlap. This dimension is actually a distance mate dimension which affects the position of the handle and will be one that I will be configuring in the table. I'll click OK and the table is created. I'll go ahead and type in the names of a few of the configurations I will be adding here. I'll call the first one setting.02, second one setting.04, And with the first two created, I can highlight both cells and drag the handle to quickly add the dot zero six, zero eight, and 10 configurations. At this point, the table has a distance dimension which can be configured for each of these, but in reality, the holes of the handle which are spaced two inches apart must line up with the hole on the lower leg. So this distance dimension must only be changed in two inch increments all the way up to 10 inches, which will be the shortest position for the handle. To account for this, I can take advantage of Microsoft Excel's data validation functionality, which allows you to limit the values that are entered into the cell. It will also make the design table more robust for future designers who may be using this table to prevent them from entering a value that doesn't work unknowingly. To do this, I'll select the first cell next to the default configuration, go to the Data tab, and select Data Validation. In the Allow dropdown, I will choose List, and for the source, I will type in the allowable values of 2, 4, 6, 8, and 10, separated by commas. I'll click OK, and notice the cell now has a dropdown next to it, where you can see the allowable values that I entered in the list. To add this to the cells below, I'll press Ctrl C to copy it. I'll highlight the cells below, but rather than just pressing Ctrl V to paste it into the other cells, I would like to preserve the data validation, so I'll go to the Paste Flyout menu, select Paste Special, and from the pop-up window I will select Validation, and click OK. These cells all now have the drop-down with the list of values I specified. I'll use the drop-down to select the appropriate value for each configuration. At this point, let's take a look at the configurations that have been created so far. I will exit the design table by clicking into the SolidWorks graphics area, and SolidWorks shows that the new configurations have been generated. I'll click OK. On the Configuration Manager tab, as I double click on each configuration, you can see the result of the distance mate changing in the two inch increments I specified. and the holes line up as you would expect. At this point, I've created a design table that represents various handle heights due to a distance mate that changes in two inch intervals. Next, I'd like to create another configuration of this assembly and show you how components can be suppressed or resolved and also discuss what happens to existing configurations when introducing new components into other configurations. Let's get started. To get back into the design table, I'll expand the Tables folder from the Configuration Manager tab, right click, and select Edit Table. I'll dismiss the pop up. I'd like to create a configuration that uses a different wheel. I'll go ahead and add a new configuration to the table, and I will call this one Standard. I'll use a value of 6 for the handle height. To use a different wheel, I must first suppress the wheel that is currently showing in this new configuration. 
To do this, I will click in the next open cell of the second row in the table. And to configure the suppression of the component, all I have to do is double click on it. SolidWorks adds it to the table and displays it as resolved. To make things easy, you can simply use an R for resolved or an S for suppressed. I'll set it to resolved in each configuration, except for this new standard configuration. Note that there are actually two instances of the component in the assembly. Watch what happens when I click into the graphics area to exit the table. SolidWorks prompts me that the new configuration was added. And if I activate it, you can see that only the instance that I double clicked on was suppressed. I'll edit the table once more to show you a method to address this. And dismiss the pop up. Notice in the table that a number appears in brackets next to the component name. This is the instance number which appears in the Feature Manager design tree for each assembly component. Rather than adding another cell to configure the other instance, all I have to do here is type in the other instance number. Next to instance 1, I'll type comma 2. When I click back out of the table, now you can see both instances are suppressed. For this standard configuration, I'd actually like to use a different wheel than what is used in all of the other configurations. But when I do this, what will happen in all of the other configurations that already include a different wheel? Well, to answer this, I must take a look at the properties for each configuration. I'll right click on one of the other configurations, select Properties, and the option I'm interested in is this one here in the Advanced Options, called Suppress New Components. If this checkbox is cleared, then any components that are added while in other configurations will not be suppressed here in this configuration. So as of right now, in the example I'm working with, if this checkbox is cleared, then when I add a new wheel component to the standard configuration, it will also appear in this configuration. The other option that needs to be considered is the Suppress New Features and Mates checkbox. This behaves just like the Suppress Components checkbox. If it is checked, then any new assembly features or mates I add while in other configurations will be suppressed in this configuration. I'll go ahead and check both of these options. And I'll repeat the process for each of the other configurations. Rather than making the same change for the default configuration, I can actually go ahead and delete this default configuration, since each of the configurations that I plan on working with have been added with descriptive names. To do this, I'll right-click on it and select Delete. Finally, I will add the other wheel to the assembly. I'll bring up a Windows Explorer window and drag in the component named Tire Plastic. I'll use a Smart Mate to position it by holding down the Alt key on the keyboard. And once it's positioned, I'll quickly make a copy of it by holding down the Control key on the keyboard as I click, drag, and release. I'll add one more Smart Mate to position the component on the other side. At this point, if I activate some of the other configurations, you can see they have the other wheel resolved, and the new components that I added in the standard configuration are suppressed. 
I'll switch back to the standard configuration. In this configuration, I would like to make one last change by suppressing a few more components. I'll switch over to the Feature Manager design tree, and I'll select the mounting plate and caster components by shift selecting them. And if I expand the fasteners folder, I'll also select the first two nuts by holding down Control as I select them. From the pop-up, I can select the Suppress icon. It is probably worth mentioning that when clicking this Suppress icon, this change will only take effect in the Active Configuration, standard in this case. I'll switch back to the Configuration Manager tab. If I switch to the other configurations, you can see the differences between them. I'll edit the design table one more time. When I do, the pop-up appears where I can choose to add the items that I just worked with to the table, such as the state of each of the components that I suppressed and added. In this case, it would add quite a bit of information to the table, which is okay from SolidWorks perspective, but from a user's perspective, it can add a lot of clutter if you include items that might not necessarily need to be controlled using the table. As I mentioned earlier, it is usually best to start simple, and you can always add items to the table later if you wish. For now, I'll just select the tire plastic component, since the table already includes the wheel that's used in the other configuration. Note that there are again two instances. Rather than selecting them both to add to the table, I can take note of the instance number that appears next to them, select one of them, and click OK. And in the table, I can add the other instance by activating the cell and typing in the other instance number. Looking at the cells in the table, you can see how the two components are suppressed and resolved in each of their corresponding configurations. Something that can take assembly design tables to the next level is the ability to specify configurations of any components or subassemblies that are used in the main assembly, all from within the design table. If I open the leg support subassembly in its own window and switch over to the configuration manager tab, you can see that two configurations exist the default configuration and another one called simple, which has some geometries suppressed. I'll switch back to the main assembly. I would like to use the simple version of the leg support subassembly in the standard configuration that I already have created. I'll edit the design table. In order to specify the configuration that I would like to use for the leg support subassembly, I must type it into the design table manually. This is a bit different than other items that can simply be double clicked from the graphics area or feature manager design tree, so the syntax is important. To add it to the table, I'll click into the next available cell in row 2. And here's where you need to pay attention to the syntax. I'll type in a dollar sign, the word configuration, followed by an at symbol, and then the component name as listed in the feature manager tree. In this case, leg.support. This is not case sensitive. Next, an open bracket, the instance number 1. And since I would like this to affect both instances, I'll add a comma and type in 2, followed by a closed bracket, and I'll press Enter. I'll type in the configuration name default for the configurations I was working with previously. And for the standard configuration, I'll type in simple. Again, it is important that the configuration name you type in matches exactly to the configuration name in the component or subassembly. At this point, I'll double check my work, so I'll click into the graphics area to exit from the table. In the standard configuration, right away you can see how the simple configuration of the leg support is now being used. Before wrapping up, I would like to create just one more configuration of this design. It will be similar to the setting 06 configuration, but it will instead have the handle component rotated 90 degrees and inserted into the other holes. To get started, I'll again edit the table, dismiss the pop-up, and I'll type in a new configuration name calling this one Flatbed. 
Since much of this configuration will be similar to the existing 06 configuration, I'll copy the cell values for that configuration and paste them in for the flatbed configuration. At this point, I will click out of the table to exit, and SolidWorks lets me know that the flatbed configuration was added. When I activate it, you can see it matches the 06 configuration that I copied the values from. As I mentioned, I would like the handle to fit into the other holes. To do this, I will need to suppress the mates that are currently used for its positioning. I'll click on the handle, and from the pop-up, I'll choose the View Mates icon. These are the mates that I will be suppressing here in this flatbed configuration, so I will shift-select them and click Suppress from the pop-up. At this point, the handle is now free to move and rotate, so I can now add the mates that I would like to use for positioning here in this configuration. I'll add a couple of concentric mates, followed by a coincident mate. At this point, the flatbed configuration is complete, and I can toggle through all of the configurations I added in this example. If you remember from earlier when I enabled the configuration property to suppress new features and mates, this resulted in the mates I just added to the flatbed configuration being suppressed in all of the other existing configurations and prevented those from having conflicting mates for positioning the handle.